Hello, so today we're going to be looking at exporting an AAF file out of Premiere Pro and into Pro Tools. So this is the Premiere Pro project that I will be exporting and um, I've got lots of audio tracks on here, some of them mono, some of them stereo, um, quite a lot of um, automation or keyframes that are um, adjusting the volume mainly. Um, I want to take all of that information over with me into Pro Tools. Um, and also, if you are like me, you might find that you have lots of different file types going on here. So in this project, I've actually got some MP3 files um, for the music and then in my sound effects files, I've actually got some files at 44 one um, kilohertz, I've got some at 48 kilohertz, and I've got some at 96 kilohertz. Um, so if, you're, if, you, you, if you are working with uh, lots of different file formats and sample rates, um, you'll find that Adobe Premiere is quite forgiving in that sense, but Pro Tools is not so forgiving, so um, you might have some issues there. I'm going to sh hopefully show you how to get around that. So first things first, we are going to go to uh, File and Export AAF. The first option you've got is if you want to mix down the video, um, so that will that will copy the video, um, mix it down at the same time that it's doing the audio. Um, I don't need to do it in this case because I already have a copy of that video which I'm going to be working to in Pro Tools. Uh, so I'm going to leave that unticked. Um, and now the next section is called Breakout to Mono. Now I would definitely enable that. Um, at first you might be thinking, well I've got lots of stereo tracks. I'd quite like to keep them as stereo tracks. Um, so I'm not going to enable that, but the problem there is that Pro Tools cannot understand um, multi-channel files um, that have been exported in an AAF. So you really have to do this for it to work properly. So make sure that's enabled. Um, the next option is render audio clip effects. That is um, personal preference. In my case, I am going to do that because I have lots of um, effects on my audio um, but just as a, a backup option there if I decided I didn't want to use the audio effects I can tick include copies without effects and that will give me um, the original files um, sample rate I want to be working at 48 kilohertz and and you will find that that's most common so I'll leave that there. Bit depth, again, 24 bits is most common, so I will leave that. Um, and then in this option here for files, you can either embed the audio or separate audio. Um, I'm gonna leave it as separate audio um, because what I want is all my audio files in a separate folder rather than embedded in the AAF. Um, I just find that that's better for file management and also sometimes you can have issues with embedded audio. Um, the next tick box there is preserve media directory name. I'm going to leave that unticked because I don't want that to be the same name as the folder where the audio files were originally stored. Um, and then finally we've got the format. I would change it to broadcast WAV. Um, you'll find that that's more commonly used as well. And yeah, we've got the render option here. Now, if you copy the complete audio files, that will that will take a bit longer. Um, if you're working with huge audio files where you've only used small sections of that audio, then you might not want to do that. Um, you might not need to do that. In my situation. I don't need to do that. I just want, you know, the audio files that I'm working with. And this is where the handles come in useful. So 
you might think, well, trim the audio files, but leave me a little bit of leeway either side of the, um, the file length that I have used in this project. And so if I leave handles, that will leave me the option to drag out um, however many frames I specify here. So remember, if you're working in 25 frames per second, then 100 frames is going to be four seconds. Um, so that is usually a good length um, to leave you for a handle. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to hit OK and just choose a new location for this um, and call it what you will okay now this might take some time depending on how many files you've got um, but what is happening now is the files are being rendered out and this is really useful um, because it guarantees you that the files are all going to be gathered up into one place. This way you know that all the files are going to get moved into a folder. You can see where that folder is and it's going to rename these files so uh, they're not going to look like the original file names but that shouldn't be a problem once you've got them into Pro Tools. But there we go, it's finished and now we can move to Pro Tools. So on the Pro Tools dashboard, uh, I am going to open from disk and then find my AAF. Open that up. And now this at this stage, you are just naming the, the Pro Tools session. So I am going to leave the name the same. Um, yeah, the location is fine. File type broadcast WAV, sample rate 48 kilohertz and bit depth 24 bits. Tick interleaved as well and then create. And now we've got the option for what data to actually bring in from the AAF. The most important bits you want to look at are in the media options. Um, in this box here, We've got several options. I would always copy from source media. Again, that's good for file management and keeping all your files together. Um, this will copy all the files into the session um, audio files folder. And then with the video, um, for me, this doesn't matter because I haven't um, imported any video. Just skipping down to the bottom section here, uh, I'm going to import rendered audio effects. So um, remember earlier we ticked the option to include both the, the rendered audio effects and the original audio. I am going to leave everything else ticked. Um, the most important one here is volume automation because you want that. Um, if you've done lots of automation within Premiere then you want that to um, be transferred over to Pro Tools. Um, Another box that you may tick here is called pan odd tracks left, even tracks right. Now, if you're working exclusively with um, stereo files and you know that um, all of your tracks will be in that same format. However, in my situation, I know that some of my tracks are mono um, and not all of my stereo uh, tracks will follow that same convention so I'm gonna to have to do that myself afterwards and I'll leave that box unticked as for the main playlist options here that shouldn't matter because in um, Premiere you don't work with playlists track data to import um, I would leave all of those as they are ticked just the default really um, that's fine and just to let you know about this section here um, so for instance by default what um, Pro Tools is going to do is take all of the tracks that I am importing and put them onto a new track now there might be some reason you don't want to do that so uh, for instance I'm not importing the video so I don't need to import that 
um, and the audio that came with the video there isn't any so again uh, change that to none everything else is fine it can go on a, on a brand new track um, and that's about it so we can hit OK and Pro Tools will import everything so that's fine um, if at first it looks like this hasn't worked properly and all your files are missing don't worry um, Pro Tools is still processing the audio in the background and as you can see right before my eyes it is now processing the audio and we can see the waveforms appear um, if you look at your clip list as well eventually all those files will become available for you so as we can see what it's done here it's imported the stereo tracks as mono files um, now what you'll need to do is if you switch to the mixer page we can have a look here and actually Pro Tools has done us a favour here hasn't it so even though we didn't tick the option for panning left and right it's made an intelligent decision and done that itself anyway for any tracks that are stereo um, that's very helpful because I thought I would have to do that myself but yeah so anything that is uh, left it has panned left and anything right it has panned right anything that was originally a mono file like this one here it's kept it in the middle but that all looks like it's worked and all my files are there um, so the only thing that would remain for me to do in this circumstance is to import my video file but apart from that we're all good to go so that's it thanks for watching and I hope you find that useful